On that November day in 2024, the world witnessed a mysterious phenomenon from the vast space, where the stars shone like diamonds on black velvet, an unidentified object fell on the capital of a vast country, named only by one mysterious letter P. In the blink of an eye, a powerful shock wave caused by the fall of an unidentified object wiped out the island nation forever. A celestial catastrophe struck this region with such force that even the most distant dreams of its inhabitants remain only in memory. Five powerful powers living in the Blue Star constellation united and decided to create a complete blockade of a remote place. Isolating it from prying eyes, they sent their outstanding scientists, endowed with unique knowledge and courage, to this corner to unravel the mystery of what happened and return what had been erased from the face of the earth. Island State to Life A year from now, humanity is entering a new era where China plays an important role in shaping the future. The man, whose name was Edison, showed a photograph and talked about a 20-year-old girl from a distant country who was only looking for someone who could accept her as his daughter, he asked his interlocutor if he would be interested in the idea of sheltering such a young lady with myself. Jason, the main character of this story, suddenly felt a wave of incomprehensible sadness and anxiety wash over him, and tears began to come from his eyes, as if suddenly revealing the long-awaited, but inexpressible secret world of his soul. It's been a year since the unidentified object fell to the ground, and the world has changed. It seems as if it has turned into a strange game world, where some have new abilities, while others have changed their jobs and acquired unusual talents. With the emergence of a secret underground kingdom, the world changed radically, animals rebelled, fighting people, and survival of the strongest began to rule, power and order became a thing of the past. To improve his skills, Jason boldly entered into battles with mighty tigers and other dangerous top-class predators, tempting his fate. The main character's brother died standing in front of him, preparing to sacrifice his life to protect his brother from a mortal threat. The protagonist's brother sacrificed himself to save him from the monsters who had set a trap behind the Ascension Crystal during times of chaos. Weakness was unacceptable. Jason was alarmed by today's date, as if it carried secrets and mysteries, ready to be revealed in an unpredictable fate. Apparently the guy was reborn and returned to the day of his awakening three years ago. The general manager expressed serious criticism of Jason and emphasized that his actions significantly violated the values and norms of the company, which led to the final decision to terminate Jason from the organization. The man had to urgently find a reason for the guy's dismissal immediately after his move in order to justify the decision to the company management and maintain stability in the team. In his past life, the man underwent a transformation, turning into a demon and sacrificed the lives of ordinary people to gain power, he forced the innocent into prostitution and doing evil. Jason did not expect to meet him after all these horrors. The man, apparently, enjoyed notoriety and unflattering authority among those around him, due to his atrocities and demonic actions. In his previous life, he beat a man to the limit and law enforcement intervened. This event was the beginning of a national awakening, but due to his ten-day stay in the detention center, he missed the beginning of this process, and most people reached level 10 and above when he finally freed. When they were both orphans in an orphanage and survived by stealing, life became difficult. But when their brother, sentenced to 15 years, was finally released from prison, their world became brighter and more secure. The brother was released early, as he showed unique abilities of the highest level, he played an important role in the fight against monsters, after which he took Jason in and the two of them carried out difficult missions. After some time, a terrible tragedy occurred. The main character accidentally killed an ordinary person. At that moment he realized that incredible powers had awakened in him. After seeing this, horror appears in people's eyes. He played an important role in the fight against monsters, after which he took Jason in, and the two of them carried out difficult- They don't understand how this is possible. How it happened that the corpses got up and went on the attack. How orcs managed to raise corpses. Some of the orcs and the rebel people grappled with the rest of the orcs. It was a necromancer. How Orcs Managed to Raise Corpses 
Nobody understood where he came from here. Neither people nor orcs understand anything at all. The orcs. It was a necromancer. The orc lord cannot be defeated with mere corpses. But this was quite expected from an aura master. And the necromancer is forced to call on more terrible forces. He calls them with the words that it is their turn. The orc lord easily deals with the soldiers and the rebelling corpses. To call on more terrible forces. His enraged eyes speak for themselves. He is ready to kill and take pleasure in it. And then he is suddenly attacked by the same force summoned by the necromancer. They fight for life and death. And then he is suddenly attacked by the same. Each of them is confident in his abilities and believes that he must win. The rebel turned out to be very strong indeed and he can compete with the orc lord. The Lord receives very strong blows and tries to endure them. His abilities and believes that he must win. The Necromancer independently enters into battle and has excellent fencing skills. Life and activity are in full swing. The era of chaos has brought change. No one could have imagined that he would end up on this battlefield. And a relationship with the main beauty of his class. But then committed many murders of innocent people and inspectors and also join one group. He will also call upon him a bunch of strong helpers. Double really fulfills his master's wishes. He and the forces he summoned are easily able to cope with strong and fearless orcs. A miniature butterfly woman cracks huge orcs like nuts. Help in the implementation of his plans, cautioning caution and guarding against the consequences of this union. On the battlefield, blood flows like a river in different directions. Matters and plans. The knights look at everything that is happening in surprise. But also win the heart of the girl of his dreams, considering her his ideal love. They are amazed that the necromancer alone was able to change the course of the battle. Guy who was ready to discuss important matters and talk about future plans. This is all despite the fact that the study of black magic is prohibited in the empire specific or important for the development of events. But the Orc Lord was amazed. He could not even think that ordinary corpses could stop him. ...and creating surprising tension in the room. However, he is confident that their abilities are not enough to stop him. And an intense fight immediately began between Jason and his double. The entire battlefield seemed to have been dug up, maintaining his balance, and pressed himself against the wall, feeling the storm of force released in this battle. The necromancer saw a worthy body on the battlefield and decided that it must certainly become one of his comrades. ...his abilities. The soul power could increase the level of the ability, but there was not enough power to go to level C, so Jason decided to use his abilities, and he began his actions. Confident that it would be used more effectively by him in the fight and the implementation of his plans, launching his bold and fearless attack which turned out to be a really powerful ability. This ability was universal, suitable for both offense and defense, and brought good luck. He began to fight the Orc Lord on his own, the great ruler for prayer and submission to his call, hoping for favor and support that could only be provided to him. This battle was very important for both sides, a lot depended on its outcome. This double was special and had an ability that allowed him to do more than any other, if he got the Book of Wishes in his hands, he would be able to fulfill any desire of the guy. The Lord grabbed his huge sword, already heavily stained with blood, 
other doppelgangers, making him a valuable advisor and assistant in various situations. However, the necromancer also did not intend to give up and continued to raise the dead from the ground. He thought that he should become even stronger, require a small amount of energy. While creating something out of nothing requires a lot of energy. For example, winning the lottery is much less energy intensive than creating a bottle of water out of nothing if you use a wish book and in relation to another person, energy expenditure depends on the willpower of that person. And he continued to raise the dead, both those who had recently died and those buried long ago. From Jason learned that fulfilling this wish would take all his energy and deprive the Lord of the ability to communicate for some time. In addition, due to the complexity of fulfilling the wish, the process could take a long time, and his brother would not be able to quickly free himself. People dear to him began to appear before his eyes. It would be strange if some crazy whim actually came true. At this time, the main character watched in surprise as the wolves quickly approached. The Dark Emperor suddenly got rid of his body, disappearing before his eyes. As it turned out, there was a clock on the chest of the Dark Emperor, and the hands on them were in the same position, which was an interesting discovery for the main character. Jason asked if the doppelganger's question had anything to do with their own abilities, and received an affirmative answer, which confirmed the interesting connection between them and their abilities. The Dark Emperor didn't have time-related abilities and they didn't appear after his rebirth, it seems he couldn't figure it out, and it's a matter he'll decide later. If he can find the answers to all his questions, then there will be no unsolvable mysteries left in this world. So he decided to start by using his acquired power to explore all the dungeons and secret areas. At this time, some girl wanted the stranger to be blocked as soon as possible because he was vile. Jason approached the hotel reception and asked to extend his stay in room 414 for another whole week. He specifically clarified that his friend was a person who could not stand disturbances, so there was no need to clean the room. Michael turned to the Time Lord, having learned about the location of his white watch. The hope of its return flickered in his eyes, and he waited impatiently for an answer. The girl began to report that upon returning to the man, his master, an unknown creature, partially deprived her of her powers, which caused a distortion in time-space. This moment became key in unraveling the mysterious events. Michael was shocked by how much money he had spent and realized that he would be in trouble for this, despite his expectations. Michael woke up extremely rarely, and his abilities, rated as SSS, included the ability to travel back in time to the era of Universal Awakening. He used these abilities by defeating one of the gods to penetrate into another dimension. During his time travel, Michael encountered a member of the Illogical Clan, and despite the difficulties, he easily defeated his opponent. Therefore, Michael was forced to activate his time travel inventory, which required a huge amount of the Time Lord's energy from 40 hundred to only 40. This resulted in the Time Lord himself becoming entangled in a time loop. And he couldn't even imagine that this would happen and had planned to return a week earlier, but instead he found himself in the future just a few hours after. Having lost their power, the Time Lords had lost the crown of time and they were faced with numerous obstacles. The girl said that she felt the power of the king of time. It seemed that someone from the city had it. The man expressed doubt, asking the girl if she was sure that her time king power had passed on to another person in the city. This person has the ability to take away your powers, which indicates that he has special strength, while the girl has weak melee skills, and with her current abilities there is no need to seek confrontation with him. Tears flashed in her eyes and she fervently begged them to trust her, as she felt that her powers now belonged to some other person. He suggested starting with an expedition into the dungeons to find their former teammates, restore strength and prepare. The girl, agreeing, will always intend to face her enemy. The guard strongly recommended exploring the dungeons carefully and carefully, suggesting that you split up into groups of five and emphasizing the importance of being careful in this area. Everyone who was present felt the anticipation of something big and amazing that was ahead. They were ready for the exciting events that would greet them in the future. Not all participants were able to avoid minor disagreements, and minor conflicts arose between them, but the general anticipation remained strong and inspiring. Among the many participants, Jason was the only one who decided to go alone. He showed unwavering determination, despite the possible dangers, and stepped into uncharted territories, relying only on his skills and confidence. 
Many were confused by Jason's decision and went along with previous announcements that entry into the dungeons would only be by command. In his previous life, Jason experienced fear at the prospect of going into dungeons, which makes his decision to go it alone all the more surprising and impressive. In his new life, Jason experienced enormous confidence and determination, which allowed him to overcome everyone and everything, adding his own bright mark to events. The guy felt a mysterious copying process begin inside him, which caused him some kind of unusual feeling and excitement. In his previous life, he was engaged in martial affairs, having a profession that reached an average level of 20. Now, with two C-level abilities, he needs to find a specialty that matches his skills. He turned to Lord, asking for advice regarding the choice of a suitable specialty, and asked if Lord could advise which specialty he should choose. The Lord suggested choosing the specialty of a magician, arguing that with a level above 20 the guy would be able to advance and become a magician seer thanks to his abilities. It turned out that level C abilities have the potential to increase their rank, opening up new prospects and opportunities for development. He asked what would happen if he chose a mage, and the robbery inventory, what profession he would switch to after the main actions in the dungeons, but the ruler did not recommend choosing robbery because it simplifies the mage's abilities. Despite the lord's good advice, his innate ability related to robbery continued to be based on the Dark Emperor. The Dark Emperor's strength and agility levels were at the limit, so choosing the assassin specialty, where agility plays a major role, seemed to be the right decision. The main character asked a question about what profession he could switch to after reaching the second level if he chose the assassin specialty. The Lord could have assumed that the specialty of an outlaw assassin would be a good combination of force and robbery. However, he insisted that the guy choose the profession of a magician, considering it easier and more suitable. The guy made his final decision and decided that his choice would be the assassin specialty despite the Lord's recommendation to choose the profession of a magician. Having changed his profession to assassin, the main character felt that he was ready for new challenges and adventures that lay ahead of him, despite the ruler's warnings. Jason noticed how his body's characteristics began to change radically, indicating that his decision to change majors was actually having an impact on his body. He believed that the assassin and the Dark Emperor formed the perfect combination for his abilities and ambitions, and it was the best combination for him in his new profession. The Dark Emperor's combat strength was currently equivalent to that of a level 20 or 30 player, so the question of needing a team to complete the mission seemed unnecessary to him. He confidently chose the most difficult level of the dungeon, decided to seriously test his skills and abilities. Despite the lack of a team or support, it was his personal challenge. With a genuine resolve, the boy confirmed his willingness to take part in the dungeon, preparing for the challenges and adventures that lay ahead. Then, he immediately encountered all possible monsters, being in the most dangerous caves, where they were found in the greatest number. The guy fought in hundreds of battles, which turned out to be a difficult test for him. Under his orders, the Dark Emperor launched a merciless attack, and the result of this attack was the massive destruction of all enemies. The Dark Emperor's strike dealt an incredible 770 points of fatal damage to the red-eyed enemy leaving him in critical condition. Their team successfully destroyed 15 red-eyed goblins, and for this achievement they were awarded a total of 2,250 experience points, allowing them to move forward in their development and acquisition of new skills. The system congratulated Jason on reaching level 6, given that the amount of experience gained was 700 out of the 1,600 required. Unfortunately, the Dark Emperor's ability called Plunder could only be used 7 times, and these monsters were considered just ordinary trash, so it was important to save energy now. The assassin's weapons can be injected with poison, and agility can be converted into strength even after the second turn, so he needs to focus on increasing agility, and his abilities should be aimed at increasing the speed associated with agility. He asked to increase his agility by 16 points, strength by 4 points, and agility power level by 10 points to strengthen his skills in combat, and increase his effectiveness in the dungeon. If you don't want to waste your abilities on increasing your physique, but still want to save energy, simply increasing your agility is by far the most economical option. In a past life, people entered a dungeon and realized that the dungeon could be 1000 m away from them. They had to fight even before the start of the mission and after a while their stamina ran out, 
As a result, many of the players and that at the beginning of the game became a burden to their teams. As for the remaining money, it will go into the treasure chest after the boss dies. The Dark Knight continued to destroy all enemies in his path, not giving them a single chance to win. Goblin and Wolf Skin of Level 6, Goblins of Level 7, Goblins of Level 8. All these monsters are becoming stronger, but the guy also reaches a high level. He is already at level 7. He was full of confidence that he would cope without difficulty, and nothing foreshadowed serious obstacles ahead. His confidence seemed absolute, as if nothing could shake his determination. Next, he had to fight an exceptionally powerful opponent, a battle with which is doomed to eternal glory and will be written down in the golden pages of the history of this era and the whole world. Surprisingly, standing in front of him was the leader of the dungeon, emitting an ominous aura straight from his being. Tension and darkness surrounded him like a gloomy cloak, as if darkness itself took on physical embodiment in his presence. There were many goblins, and their skills were very different from the Grim Emperor, which made one think about possible tactics in the upcoming battles. While the main character was deep in thought about the upcoming events, one of the goblins suddenly rushed at him. Even though they were just computer-generated NPCs, no matter how much he tried to understand them, they still caused him unquenchable irritation and bewilderment. He thought that he needed to choose something that was most related to necromancy, which made one think about possible tactics in the upcoming battle. Andreas must choose a characteristic for himself. When the young man saw them for the first time, he was amazed at the huge selection. The Chinese Tao, the way of weapons and much more, but all this was not what he needed. To begin with, he decided to look at those that he had not previously possessed. He knew that most likely the solution would definitely be among them. What he needed. And he saw evolution, the phenomenon of adaptation of living beings and their achievement of a more complex form of life. He knew that most likely the solution would- Andreas didn't remember this trait in the game, but it was exactly what he needed. Evolution would help him go beyond his own limits. There was absolutely no point in thinking. He made his choice and an inscription appeared in front of him stating that this trait had been chosen. Now he saw what kind of future this trait would bring him. The young man saw all his comrades, stating that this trait had been chosen. Those to whom he would give a second chance, so to speak. And those who will support him in difficult situations. He saw his army and his future self. After everything he had seen, he was confident that he could survive and complete the game like Andreas. The Maple Leaf Dormitory was free housing for the Academy. He saw his army and his future self. Andreas was a third-rate villain, and once in his body, the main character realized how weak he was, could survive and complete the game like Andreas. The Maple Leaf Dormitory was free housing for the Academy. He could barely cope with elemental magic. The only thing he is capable of is necromancy, and therefore Wilhelm decided to choose evolution could survive and come before heading to the cemetery the guy decided to go to the research laboratory
There was not a moment to lose. He had to become stronger as soon as possible. With the hope that she might see it from a different perspective, he continued the dialogue, arguing that time travel had the potential to change the course of events and even warn against certain mistakes. Some import He had two guesses. The first was that the Dark Emperor in this world stole her power to become stronger and complete the dungeon. And the second was that the Dark Emperor from the future extracted her power in order to return to the present and complete some important mission. But there was someone in this room who could kill the main character right now. Mistakes. Some import he had two guesses. The first was that the Dark Emperor in this world stole her power to become strong. If he was not mistaken, then this girl was a vampire. Did her power in order to return to the present and complete some important mission. But there was someone in this room. In this game, vampires are not susceptible to sunlight and also have very strong magic. They are not creatures that the professor can easily get hold of. She's pretty much like a boss in any average game. The girl called out to Andreas and asked if he wanted to help her escape. Vampires are not susceptible to sunlight and also have very... Later, while in the train carriage, he thought that this was a very tempting offer. She's pretty much like a boss in any average game. Perhaps it was even some kind of gift of fate. Very strong magic. Later, while in the train carriage, he thought that this was a very tempting offer. Victoria offered him a deal. She promised to kill the professor if he freed her. And the girl also wondered if the main character was not afraid that sooner or later Mr. Schmidt would kill him. It was expected from the vampire that she would see his wariness towards the professor. Victoria offered him a deal. Interestingly, the dream of a double could have an impact on the main character and take away the strength of other people. This added mystery and complexity to the world of the story in which he was drawn. The guy was faced with an incredibly difficult choice and he understood that he needed to weigh all his decisions and actions in order to choose a path that would lead him to his desired goal and would not harm others. He was thinking whether he should just trust her. The guy reasoned that if he betrayed the teacher now, then he could not avoid problems. And Victoria was indignant, saying that they did not have time for his thought. The guy thought that he needed to find out more about vampires. Perhaps there was some book that told how to control them. Over time, strange and inexplicable phenomena began to occur around her, which inspired bewilderment and anxiety. The young man could barely drag his suitcase. A notification came from the system that congratulated the player for winning 10 prizes. It was some incredible luck that made him feel happy and surprised. In fact, the guy got everything he dreamed and desired. His luck and determination brought him incredible rewards and made him happy and satisfied. At the cemetery gates, a guy called something like a code and they let him through. His determination and confidence in his actions were amazing when he crushed this valuable crystal. This action raised questions among those around him, but for him it was an obvious choice. He proclaimed to the Dark Emperor that these two communication crystals were rightfully his and asked to take them away. This was a bold and decisive action that emphasized his confidence and power in this world. This new improvement made his counterpart a more powerful and effective tool, able to control events from a greater distance which opened up new perspectives and strategies in games and adventures. Thus, the guy still had a heart of energy and crystals of cruelty, which gave him unique abilities and abilities in his adventures and battles. The intrigue and mystery surrounding the origin and purpose of these crystals increased his interest. He wanted to find out what secrets they held and who they could be intended for. The Lord's eyes were shining with delight, and when he took these crystals in his hands, he said that if the guy gave him these crystals, then he would no longer have to worry about problems with energy. 
This was a sentence that made him think about what is the best way to proceed. Despite his hesitation, the guy made a decision and eventually gave these crystals to the Lord. This was done as a sign of trust and gratitude for his help in his adventures. In a moment, the Lord of Prayer used the crystals, crushed them, and absorbed their power into his body, using their energy to strengthen his abilities. This was an important moment that could affect the outcome of their future adventures. It's a pity that the real crystal wasn't enough to significantly increase his inventory. But the 4% increase was undoubtedly useful. But without the cosmic crystal, he wouldn't be able to take the equipment he was used to using with him, which presented him with new challenges and tasks in his adventures. In order to find the cosmic crystal, you only need to go forward and look for it ahead. This was a new goal and direction for his adventures. Coming out of the portal, he felt the air of a new world fill his lungs, and he was ready to take on the new adventures and challenges that awaited him. This was the beginning of another exciting chapter of his story. Now he has surpassed many in strength and ability, and he has a great opportunity to develop quickly and leave other players behind. His luck and determination have made him an important participant in this world of adventure. And now it was time to go to the Tower of Babel to get his first achievement. The number of levels there was endless, and this represented a new challenge and adventure for him. To be honest, in front of the portal there was a crowd of people eager to enter the Tower of Babel and start their own adventure. This place was the center of attention for many adventurers and he knew that the competition and struggle for achievements would be tough. For every ten floors of the Tower of Babel that he could complete, a reward was offered in the form of a lottery ticket for the Wheel of Fortune, so the guy would have to work hard and demonstrate his skills to reach new levels and get those valuable tickets. A stunning girl approached the guy and offered to join a team. This offer added inspiration and opportunities for him to successfully complete the Tower of Babel. However, he was not interested in teaming up as he believed that such collaborations could negatively affect his speed of completing levels. The Tower of Babel turned out to be quite supportive of newcomers, even allowing different dogs at level 4. The guy decided to call upon the Dark Emperor to help in this matter and work for the benefit of their adventure. The two of them then began to fight their opponents, although it was unclear why, since their opponents had not touched them anyway. Their determination and ambition could sometimes lead them into actions that went beyond the ordinary. Then, suddenly, there was a mountain of dogs that were simply unconscious, as if struck by something invisible or unknown influence. This created a mystery that they had to solve. The following dogs turned out to be unusual. They were huge and muscular creatures. It is obvious that they had to fight much more powerful and dangerous opponents than simple dogs on the lower levels of the tower. Jason didn't see how prepared they were at all and said that he was in a hurry. He asked them to be faster emphasizing his determination and desire to continue moving forward. After everyone saw that the Dark Emperor only needed 88 seconds to overcome the 8th floor of the Tower of Babel, which was considered the hardest, everyone was delighted with such a unique ability, which earned respect and admiration from the rest of the participants. Once the guy enters the 10th floor of the Tower of Babel, he will be able to exit the mission only after completing the level, or in case of his death. This posed a serious test for him and he will have to fight to survive and successfully complete this level. He remembered that in a past life, the first person to climb ten floors alone was a man, since he was able to pass this stage. Then he simply must achieve the achievement of at least level ten and twenty in order to set a new standard and confirm his skills. The dog-headed lord appeared in front of the guy, which added elements of fantasy and excitement to his adventure. This boss will likely become a serious test on the way to reaching level 10 of the Tower of Babel. Even just standing still, the main character looked confident and calm. Despite meeting the dog-headed lord, his equanimity and self-confidence were obvious, and this could affect the course of events and the outcome of the battle. The dog-headed lord's crazy strikes combined with his swords made for a tough challenge for the guy. It wasn't the easiest combination to fight and he would have to use all his skills and intelligence to overcome this challenge. Realizing the complexity of the situation, his double came to the guy's defense, preparing to help in the fight against the dog-headed lord. This alliance and cooperation could increase their chances of victory. In a split second, he fixed his gaze directly on his opponent's face, showing determination and readiness to fight. This moment created a tense atmosphere in the battle. For the second time in a row in a battle with a serious opponent, the Dark Emperor managed to land the first blow, 
his determination and skills made him a dangerous opponent, and this was visible in his ability to engage in battle. Then the dog-headed lord became indescribably furious, and his attacks became more violent and dangerous. This added tension and importance to the battle, and the guy will have to fight an even more powerful opponent. The main character could not understand why he flew away from the Dark Emperor so easily. This raised questions in his mind about what could have happened and what was the reason for this outcome of the battle. It was clear from his gaze that the Dark Emperor had come up with something sinister and cunning. His eyes and facial expression indicated that he was planning something insidious that could change the course of the battle. Then, in the darkness of the dungeon, the boss no longer seemed so defenseless. His strength grew and his determination to attack became palpable. Among the shadows he was preparing for a powerful blow. Then, in the darkness of the dungeon, the boss no longer seemed so defenseless. His strength grew, and his determination to attack became palpable. But his plans quickly collapsed, and the Dark Emperor did not allow him to do what he had planned. The system solemnly congratulated the young man for his magnificent achievement becoming the first player in the whole world who was able to overcome ten floors of the mysterious Tower of Babel, completing it alone. Of course, this made an impression on everyone who learned about such an event. On the outside, people were in deep bewilderment, their minds were confused, and it seemed incredible to believe in the veracity of this information. World news seems to have activated the magical mechanism inside this magic stone, and something mysterious and incomprehensible appeared on its surface. It seems that a real disaster is approaching, and there is a possibility that the world will soon be plunged into chaos. Perhaps we should advise everyone to prepare for the onset of worse times. Jason hoped that thanks to the Lord of Prayer's abilities, he would be able to win something valuable from the lottery he received for defeating the dungeon boss. The young man was completely perplexed about the inventory that fell to him, and it was called the Cosmic Crystal, he invariably realized that it was with the help of this mysterious object that he had to return to the real world. A real crystal is used directly, which is why the cosmic crystal, which serves to return to reality, had a power exceeding it by 7%. The guy decided to take two magic crystals with him to strengthen his abilities in the field of protection, but he decided to give two crystals associated with life force to the Dark Emperor as a sign of some kind of agreement or goodwill. Thus, he had only two tickets left for the Wheel of Fortune and as many as 275 fragments of fate. Before moving to the next level, you must complete the sale of all your equipment, because the sooner you do this, the higher the value of these items will be. In the game universe and the real world, currencies vary, and in this context, one a game copper coin can fetch between 5 and 6 dollars at the current exchange rate. This variation in price is due to various factors and the player should take it into account when exchanging a game currency for real money. Deciding to take into account that one game copper coin is equivalent to $6 in real life, the guy began his financial calculations and planning his actions in the game. And so, the main character decided to put up for sale two rare weapons of the highest level, as well as a powerful spell of the highest level. This was an important step in his development strategy in the world of the game. The young man was astounded when he discovered that his inventory had been bought up in just a few minutes, and the transaction amounted to a whopping $5 million in real currency, an unexpected but extremely pleasant turn of events. The guy thought about it and realized that he had underestimated potential buyers among rich people in vain. He admitted that his selling strategy may have been unsuccessful, and it would be better to sell his items one by one in order to get a greater profit. But the guy wasn't too upset because the process of cleaning the equipment was just a trifle. What worried him more was the thought that he might have to spend the whole night here to reach level 20. And besides, he had a transfer task. But with, with such powerful resources and new opportunities, he was ready for these tests. The Smiling Coffin, the Great Tomb and the Baki Society. Three darkly famous clans recreated in this new era of chaos that followed their previous life. Jack, one of the eight prominent leaders of the Clan of Eight preferred to carry his trusty knife with him, a clear sign of his determination and independence that confused many, but gave him charisma and authority. Among the ten guards of the great tomb, the blood which Lucy and Ice Fury made great contributions to the development of this clan, their powers and skills helped the clan overcome many challenges and strengthened its position in this dark era. 
After the main character is able to defeat the bloody witch Lucy and Ice Fury, he will have the opportunity to go to Sin City. This is a place where people leave each other, hate, and commit many unacceptable acts. In this city there are weakened souls who will never be able to, to atone for their sins, even if they have to experience death thousands of times. As for those who killed the guy and his brother, as well as the people who were hired for this villainous act and did not reach the level of ability C, then when he finally finishes off the leader, he will not stop, he will decide to take revenge for his past life and destroy everyone, including those who were behind it. Restoration of justice and retribution became his main goal. The man in charge of the villa called Crouching Tiger couldn't help but notice that Chinese methods of fighting fraud were becoming more and more effective. Today sending people to work in East Asia by deception no longer brought as much profit as it had previously. This made him think about the need to change their methods and approaches. Now that he had registered his company, he had a real opportunity to achieve great fame and success. This new beginning allowed him to use legitimate means to achieve his goals and create an empire that would bring him recognition and wealth. First he had to recruit staff in China and keep them busy for a while, and then convince them to join the team. This was an important step in the implementation of his plan, and he knew that success required careful preparation and the ability to inspire his future allies. Having received notification that another person had fallen for his trap, he realized that if he could collect enough clues and evidence, the network would be closed, and his boss would certainly praise him for this success. This was a powerful motivation to continue his work and achieve your goals. The protagonist has already advanced to the 11th floor of the Tower of Babel, his adventures and challenges becoming more exciting as he continues his ascent. On the 11th floor, the protagonist was greeted by a grim sight of many skeleton warriors, testifying to the past battles and challenges of this gloomy place. With such a threat in front of him, he had to be on guard and prepare for new challenges. On the first 10 floors of the Sky Tower of the Game World, players could only obtain Shards of Fate. But after completing these levels, the opportunity to obtain more valuable equipment became available. This became a reward for their perseverance and skill in overcoming the challenges at higher levels of the tower. With a cool look, the guy gave the order to his counterparts to attack and not leave anyone behind. His determination and leadership qualities made his team more effective and dangerous to their opponents. Within seconds he began to carry out his order, starting the fight and putting his plan into action. His attacks and strikes were not only fast, but also amazingly accurate. The Dark Emperor demonstrated outstanding skill and strength in battle with his enemies. It was even possible to meet level 17 skeleton generals on this floor, a clear sign that the challenges and enemies were becoming more powerful with each passing floor in the tower. James asked the skeleton general with a smirk if it was because he looked down on him, considering that the guy was only level 13. The guy decisively showed that the skeleton was wrong, and his arrogance would turn out badly for him. Soon the skeleton general saw that his underestimation of the hero was a huge mistake. The system reported that the protagonist successfully completed the 11th floor of the Tower of Babel in just 1 minute and 35 seconds, his rapid progress earning admiration and respect from other players. With three years of experience accumulated in his previous life, even in the most dangerous corners of the world there were no creatures that could threaten him. He was so experienced and confident in his abilities that he was going to reach the 20th level by surprise, without stopping or slowing down. As the guy predicted, after just 8 minutes he had already reached the 20th floor, his incredible speed and skills allowed him to easily overcome the challenges of the Tower of Babel and move forward to new adventures and achievements. He was met by Lord Skeleton, clearly a worthy opponent and with this meeting began one of the most epic battles of his adventures in the Tower of Babel. Without waiting a moment, he immediately rushed to attack his opponents, his determination and courage unshakable, and he was ready to take on the challenge from the skeleton lord and his followers. In addition, besides him, his faithful wards came to the rescue, ready to support him in the battle and join forces to defeat the skeleton lord and his followers. There were over 200 skeleton warriors on this level and the difficulty of the battle far exceeded those he had encountered on the previous 19 floors. It was a great test of his skill and strategy. Lord Skeleton began to attack his opponents, letting them know that they had come to his floor in vain. His strength and determination were great, and he intended to repel any attempts by his enemies. 
Of course, for the Dark Emperor, all these skeletons did not pose any threat. His power and strength exceeded their capabilities, and he looked at this battle from above, confident in his invincibility. His blows were so destructive that the bones of the skeletons crumbled in a matter of seconds, not giving them the slightest chance of survival. This was a terrifying proof of his power and mercilessness. After a few seconds, the Dark Emperor decided to personally engage the Skeleton Lord. The fight between the two powerful enemies promised to be epic and would determine the fate of this fight. Their battle, without a doubt, will go down in history and be remembered for a long time. This clash of two powerful opponents is doomed to become a legend, leaving a mark in the chronicles of the game world and in the memory of everyone who watched it. The main character was not at all pleasant, since he was surrounded by several dozen skeletons. This situation created a serious threat, and he had to fight a large number of enemies in order to save his life and move forward. It seems that his current abilities are not sufficient to defeat this army of skeletons, and there is a serious possibility that he will suffer serious injuries in this battle. He will face a difficult test, and he will have to show skill and strategy in order to survive and advance further. He decided to summon the Lord of Prayers and asked for favor. His desire was that in the next battle the Dark Emperor would go on the assault and strike with a vengeance. This was a chance to change the outcome of the battle and turn the balance of power in his favor. Under the influence of the Lord of Prayer, he ordered his counterpart to attack the skeletons precisely so that they would not be completely defeated. This tactical decision allowed him to save the lives of his enemies and use them in the future, perhaps as allies. The Lord of Prayer announced that the boy's wish had been granted. A new battle now opened before him, and he prepared to accept the challenge of the Dark Emperor with redoubled strength and determination. To be honest, he could not completely believe that he had the ability to make such powerful wishes and see them come true. For him, this was an undoubted sign of his unique abilities and significant influence in this world. The expression on the Dark Emperor's face showed that he felt a new surge of strength and power after fulfilling his wish. The battle promised to be even more epic as both opponents now had enhanced abilities and determination to win. While the Dark Emperor showed a surge of strength and confidence, the Skeleton Lord became a little nervous and began to worry about his own safety. New circumstances and the strengthening of the enemy posed a real threat to him. Despite the renewed threat, the main character decided to continue fighting and not leave his double alone with the Dark Emperor. He was ready to fight equally and give everything of himself in order to change the outcome of this battle in favor of his team. In a split second, the Dark Emperor was ready to deliver his devastating blow to the Skeleton Lord. The fate of this epic battle was on the line, and both opponents were ready to give everything to gain the upper hand in this battle. The enemy, without wasting any time, also took a stance, preparing to defend against the devastating blow of the Dark Emperor. This battle promised to be a real test and a clash of two inexorable forces. Due to some unknown reasons, the Dark Emperor suddenly fell into pieces. This, of course, was to the liking of the Lord, who could breathe a sigh of relief, seeing his mighty opponent defeated. The guy was amazed and a little lost at this moment. The outcome of the battle was far from what he expected, and this made him think about the nature of the forces that were at play. However, he did not have time to think, since he was still was in the center of the battle, and his opponents were waiting for his actions. The Lord was now sure that the guy had no chance of survival, and his destruction was only a matter of time. Suddenly, the Dark Emperor appeared out of nowhere and attacked the enemy directly from behind, and the Lord was now sure that the guy had no chance of survival, and his destruction was only a matter of time, which caused defeat and bewilderment of the guy. The guy, realizing what had happened, understood deep in his soul that all the events were part of the Dark Emperor's cunning plan, and his hopes for victory quickly faded, leaving only a bitter feeling of disappointment. The Dark Emperor's planned attack, although unexpected, did not stop the boy from turning into battle, and he used his skills and strength to retaliate and inflict stunning damage on the Dark Emperor, leaving him confused and with the hope of victory. This answer was a great example of how to ask wishes correctly, for the Lord was simply torn to pieces, which was his fate. Having gathered his forces and concentrated all his sinister energy, the Dark Emperor was about to deliver a decisive blow, which, as he believed, should finish off the guy and put an end to his resistance. The guy insisted on leaving the Skeleton Lord alone, 
as they had more important tasks to do and the potential help of an ally could be useful in future battles. Everyone watching outside was amazed that the guy was able to walk 20 floors, and many were no longer sure that he would stop, as his determination and skill aroused admiration and respect. In this labyrinth, the player will have to solve complex puzzles, fight monsters and explore many intricate paths, in the hope of finding a way out to the next level and continuing his way to the top of the tower. The main character uses the shortest route he knows to speed up the passage of the dungeon and reduce the likelihood of falling into traps or encountering dangerous creatures in this maze. All efforts are aimed at getting to the 30th floor as quickly as possible and meeting the boss, for this was the next significant stage in his adventure. The system congratulated the boy for reaching the 30th floor of the Tower of Babel, celebrating his achievement and preparing him to face the boss that stood before him as his next test challenge. The Dark Emperor, with an imposing gloom in his eyes, slowly opened the doors of the floor, letting the guy know that their clash was imminent, and allowing him to enter the battle world where the fate of the stage of his adventure would be decided. They were met by a level 30 Minotaur King, a powerful creature ready to fight the guy in mortal combat and test his strength. Finally, the guy was able to use his active skill called robbery, which gave him an advantage in the battle with the Minotaur King and the opportunity to obtain valuable resources after victory. To show off his greatness, the Minotaur King loudly brought down his hammer, creating an earthquake and filling the air with the sound of thunder, heralding the start of an epic battle. When the king saw that the guy was only level 15, he laughed at first, because he believed that Jason had no idea what awaited him in this battle, underestimating his potential. The Minotaur King looked at the guy with some bewilderment, but still decided to answer, explaining that the labyrinth was only part of his kingdom and a challenge for those who boldly entered it. Jason, with confidence in his eyes, was preparing to start the battle and prove his strength and savvy. He boldly raised his weapon and looked at the Minotaur King, preparing to begin the fight. And at that moment, the Dark Emperor appeared nearby, ready to join the battle, forming a team capable of repelling the Minotaur King and ending him in this epic battle. And so began the great battle where the boy and the Dark Emperor stood against the Minotaur King, ready to fight for their destiny and victory in this epic battle. In a previous life, he had learned from personal experience that one should not rush through floors 21 to 29 and instead it was better to quickly eliminate all possible threats and risks to avoid unpleasant surprises. Since the monsters the players were fighting could revive and answer the king's call to support their boss, the boy and the dark emperor were forced to be vigilant and not give them a chance to interfere in the battle. This is not the first generation of players to fall into this stupid trap, and it has become part of the cycle of challenges that await those who boldly move forward, striving to conquer the tower and defeat its bosses. But Jason was not one of those players, because he had a clear plan of action and strategy that allowed him to skillfully navigate this dangerous world and overcome difficulties. The guy called upon the Lord of Prayers and told him to continue helping him and the Dark Emperor strike with double force, which would give them an advantage in this battle. With every powerful blow thrown by the boy and the Dark Emperor, the Minotaur King began to feel increasing pressure and lose his confidence, and their combined tactics were effective. They continued to attack with a vengeance, bringing the Minotaur King to his knees. With each final blow, the Minotaur King came closer to his defeat, his powers remained barely noticeable, and his battle was close to the end. The guy and the Dark Emperor continued their attacks, preparing to complete this epic duel and defeat the final boss. The Minotaur King, unable to withstand the pressure, called upon his warriors from the very underworld to come to the aid and protect their master in a final attempt to turn the tide of the battle. To Jason knew that the call of warriors by the Minotaur King meant the beginning of his last desperate attack, and he and the Dark Emperor were ready to meet this challenge. Having gathered together, the boy and the Dark Emperor began a coordinated counterattack, inviting their comrades and subordinates with magic and shock spells to counter the invasion of the Minotaur King's warriors. The doppelganger activated his powerful earthquake skill with a 30% increase in power, creating strong seismic vibrations that became an obstacle for the Minotaur King's warriors. With each battle area captured, the guy continued to advance and mobilize his strength and skills to the maximum, creating a path to victory over the Minotaur King. Tirelessly and with tenacity he rose to the top of this epic battle. Having fallen to the ground, 
the Minotaur King lost the last signs of resistance, and his power disappeared. Victory was close, and the guy with the Dark Emperor continued to attack, delivering the last decisive blows. As the boy's level began to rise, he felt an amazing sense of satisfaction and achievement, realizing that his persistence and strategy had led him to victory in this difficult battle. However, it was too early for him to relax, because right after that, the assistants of the Minotaur King entered the hall, ready to continue the battle and defend their defeated master. The dark warriors of the Minotaur King and his assistants, having entered the hall, confirmed that they were ready to fight to the last drop of blood and avenge their defeated master. The battle flared up again, and the guy with the Dark Emperor were forced to face a new wave of opponents who were not going to give up. These monsters, coming from the very underworld, were rushing straight towards them, and it seemed that they had arrived just in time to strengthen the army of the Minotaur King's assistants. A new wave of dangerous opponents was causing a serious threat and required maximum mobility and strength from the guy and the Dark Emperor. As it turned out, out of nowhere, the guy also began to call on his warriors to resist the onslaught of monsters from the underworld itself and the Minotaur King's assistants. The battle in the hall reached its climax and both sides were ready to fight to the end. The guy asked to check some things to make sure how well he used his abilities and skills in battle. It was important to understand whether he made the right choice in his strategy. The sounds of hammers striking were then heard throughout the hall, indicating an ongoing battle and the intense fighting that was taking place in this battle. After some time, three or even more warriors appeared in front of him, ready to join the battle and support the guy in this battle, Reinforcement from the Allies was extremely important in this situation. In the depths of his soul, he felt that he had chosen a worthy ability, and with each passing moment this confidence strengthened, the warriors supporting him became clear proof of the correctness of his decision. The guy had several dozen dedicated warriors under his command, ready to follow him into battle and fight on his side, their courage and determination gave him additional confidence in their abilities. The newbie dungeon, the secret mushroom kingdom, was a place where some guy claimed that he would make all his enemies kneel before him. But now he had support in the form of his allies, and they were ready to prove their strength. Everything happened exactly as he foresaw, in front of him, as if from a myth, stood the king of the eighth level mushrooms, silently bowing on his knees, expressing his devotion and respect to the unearthly being who brought with him an aura of mystery and power. The man continued to clap his palms, creating a rhythmic sound that filled the air around him, his palms rising and falling like magical wings, calling for attention and creating magical tension in the moment. In the end, he discovered a person who was at the SS level, and called him the eyes of the emperor. He is confident that he can defeat this dark emperor, counting on his support. The guy was surprised why the man was so calm about his skill, known as the eyes of the emperor. He was wondering how this man was able to remain serene in front of such a powerful ability and not feel fear. This man, Oscar, introduced himself as the one who lives outside of time, and he promised to make the guy stronger. This statement made the guy wonder what is really hidden behind this mysterious man and what powers he really has. Of course, the guy had mixed feelings about Oscar, because he could not unravel the mystery of why he became the object of attention of this mysterious man. This caused him fear and bewilderment, and he sought to unravel Oscar's motives and purpose. Oscar explained that he urgently needed the guy's help, and added that his abilities would allow him to conquer any monster and force it to kneel. This statement caused mixed feelings in the guy, and he thought about the possibility of cooperation. At that moment, Jason's warriors prepared to attack, and the tension in the air became stronger. There was a hint of impending conflict, and all eyes were turned towards the nearest threat. In addition to this, the main character decided to summon his Dark Emperor to strengthen his forces in the upcoming attack. The double was cold-blooded and merciless, ready to tear to pieces anyone who dared to stand in his way. With his appearance, the situation was filled with even greater tension, and no one could predict where this fight would lead them. After he landed, everyone around him suddenly flew several meters away, under the influence of the power emanating from this powerful creature. It was an astonishing sight, and everyone present could not hide their surprise. Indeed, the force of the landing turned out to be enormous, as if the earth itself shook under a powerful blow. Everyone around felt this shock and realized that a creature with incredible strength was standing in front of them. The guy, meanwhile, was worried about something else, 
There was so much dust in the room that it created additional difficulties and added mystery to this amazing situation. When people learned that Jason was the first player in the world to reach the 30th floor of the Tower of Babel, their minds were filled with bewilderment and misunderstanding. He was demonstrating something that seemed incredible, and it caused surprise and admiration among those around him. For the guy, this meant that he now had the opportunity to rise to a completely new level. Jason's achievement became a source of inspiration and motivation for him. He saw it as a challenge and a chance to surpass himself. Understanding the complexity of the second level dungeon and the experience from his past life cannot be used. The guy urgently needed a snack and quench his thirst. When the main character was eating, he noticed that a guy next to him dared to hit the girl. It suddenly became apparent that standing before them were his former colleagues, with whom he had long shared his adventures and secrets. It brought back memories of times past and made them wonder what brought them here, to this moment and in this place. Immediately he began to remember how these former colleagues discussed him behind his back. Those conversations that he accidentally overheard could be unpleasant and not always honest. At that moment he thought about what motives led them to meet and how past grievances may affect their future cooperation. The girl, with trepidation and sincerity in her voice, asked for forgiveness from the captain. She fervently asserted that she never intended to harm or cause misunderstanding. Her eyes expressed sincere regret and her words sounded like a sincere admission of her mistakes. The guy, however, did not want to listen to her and with a tinge of disappointment in his voice remarked that there was no point in her apology if she had already ruined everything. Jason assumed that the man had disappeared and it seemed that he was already dead. A heavy atmosphere filled the room, and he began to think about how this mysterious and frightening incident would unfold. With ardent attention to his condition and with clear instructions, he insisted that the girl be brought at once, and that the work of treating his wounds should proceed without any doubt. One of the men, with clear anger in his voice, ordered the girl to stand up immediately, his anger and intolerance visible to everyone, and he insisted that she comply with his order without delay. He turned to her with questions, insisting on whether she still considered herself a leader, and in addition demanded to know the location of the boss. His words sounded like a challenge to her authority and position in this situation. The captain will always remain alive in their hearts. The man persistently humiliated her, saying that before she was just a dog, and now she had become their boss. His words were clearly aimed at humiliating her and making her feel helpless. Some of these men once had very close and friendly relationships, but over time something has changed. New circumstances and events have greatly affected their relationship with each other and now they are no longer the same as they were before. They had to be quick about selecting another player as they had to complete the second level of the Tower of Babel. The next stage was awaiting them with new challenges and riddles, and they needed a full squad to increase their chances of success. When the man started eating, his gaze was lost somewhere in unknown horizons, as if he had gone into his thoughts, into the world of memories or even into an inaccessible future. His gaze was mysterious and deep as if he saw something that others did not notice, and this gave this moment a special mystery. He stood up from his seat and said that their last meeting with Jason was a long time ago, as if a lot of time had passed, and this added a special touch of nostalgia to their communication. The girl also immediately noticed his gaze and addressed him by name, pronouncing his name with tenderness and joy in her voice. The man began to wonder where the guy had been since everyone was reborn and changes took place in their world, the question was filled with concern and a desire to understand what happened in time and events when they did not see each other. He advised the guy to enjoy the delicious food and not sigh too heavily, as if his words were an attempt to lift spirits and clear up the atmosphere. And the man asked what ability he had awakened and offered help in using this ability to earn big money. This offer added interest and intrigue to the conversation, and everyone around was eagerly awaiting an answer. The main character instantly remembered that a man had said exactly the same words in his past life. This gave him a feeling of deja vu and raised questions about the man's real purpose and motives. The guy remembered that in a past life he shared with the man all the details of his talent. Old conversations and secrets returned to his memory, and this added new questions and mysteries to the current situation. Unfortunately, the guy noticed that the man took his story as a joke. This disappointment and misunderstanding of a fragment of the past definitely left a mark on their meeting. Jason apologized and clarified that he was not looking for a team at all, 
emphasizing that his goals and motives in this world may have changed. Since the man didn't know that the guy was the Dark Emperor, she asked him if he wanted to become just like the Dark Emperor. The girl began to stop the main character, warning him against making too hasty and important decisions. She began to beg him to save her and, adding to this, promised that he could do whatever he wanted if only he would help her. Her pleas sounded sincere and desperate, and she hoped that his feelings for her would be stronger than his ambitions. Placing his hand on her chest, she begged him to take her with him. Her voice pierced her heart, and her touch was soft and touching. She passionately prayed for salvation and support in this difficult moment. The main character immediately removed his hand and said that she was mistaken. He was not looking for a partner. This decision was decisive, and he sought to maintain his independence and freedom of action. The man flushed with rage when he saw that the girl dared to leave them. His anger was evident in his gaze and words, and he felt that she should not leave them at such a moment. He began to reproach the girl, accusing her of trying to seduce everyone she meets. His words were full of resentment and indignation, and he saw in her a source of discord and discontent. At this time, the rest of the partners began to discuss that the girl may believe that Jason has a high level of abilities and it is because of this that she pesters him. This conversation aroused interest and questions about what motives could motivate the girl and how this affects on their team. If the man knew that the Gibson family was ready to forgive the two thieves, he could immediately head to this family with some kind of robbery plan. He reflected that perhaps they were made for each other, and this could be of interest to his ambitions. After these words, Jason flushed with anger and said that he did not advise them to continue in the same vein adding that he had three very serious words for them. The man waited motionless, looking at Jason, his curiosity caught in the words. He was ready to find out what mysterious three words could be so important and excite Jason so much that he decided to voice them at this time and place. He was not at all afraid of the guys and said three words, after which he began to reproach the guy for not being able to jump above his head. His words were full of challenge and arrogance and he was confident in his high assessment of his abilities. His patience had run out completely and a fierce fire appeared in his eyes. The protagonist could no longer tolerate the endless ridicule and humiliation, and his determination to do something about it became more and more noticeable. The man decided that the main character needed to be told about what the world of fists is. This decision was an attempt to shed light on the essence of the situation and, perhaps, soften the tension between them. They had an insatiable desire to fight with that guy. Excitement and excitement pulsated in their veins like a living flame, and they certainly longed to experience the moment of truth when fate would challenge them in this amazing duel. They insisted that the guy fully understand that the inspector was powerless to save him. All persuasion and entreaties were in vain, because they had to grapple with a force that no law or authority was subject to. This moment was a real test of their characters, and they were ready for this challenge. Needless to say, our protagonist avoided the man's blow with ease and his reaction was instantaneous. Beginning with a modest pause, as if preparing for a great moment, he eventually delivered his final and devastating blow, as if calling upon all his strength and skill to perfection. Then, as if dancing with shadows, he easily took on two men in a single maneuver, like the embodiment of strength and coordination rolled into one. He was a living witness and direct participant in two different destinies, as if having gone through the whirlwind of life twice, and this experience allowed him to perfectly understand what the world of fists is. But the confusion overwhelmed the man when he realized that two outstanding players could not find a way to defeat him, as if he were an unshakable rock that could not be overcome by two. With no other options, with a heavy heart, he took his knife, kept inside his jacket, as if the last hope for salvation. With the brilliance of a certain determination, he prepared for the last stand of the fight. And, as one would expect, he without hesitation attacked the guy with a knife in his hand, as if carrying a storm of determination and despair. With Jason's ease, resisting the attack was a matter of an instant. As if his reactions were precise and quick, like a skilled master, he dodged with such grace that the attack passed him by, like a dance in which he was a consummate choreographer. After dodging, Jason struck the man with an incredible blow, like a blow from the gods, which deflected all of his relentless determination and strength. With skillful kicking, Jason created the illusion of an attack that was so realistic that the man he was fighting felt pressured and in danger, as if he were facing a real threat. 
the two companions could do nothing but watch as their captain, seemingly invincible, rushed forward towards the wall, as if sacrificing himself in the hope of one last heroic moment. In his eyes they were simply incompetent weaklings, and he was unwilling to even waste his strength, believing that they were not worthy of his attention and did not even deserve him to get his hands dirty for them. Of course, the partners were in complete bewilderment, not expecting that the guy had such incredible strength and skills, as if a hero had awakened in him, about whom they had no idea. Realizing that they were no match for the guy, they immediately began to beg him to join their team, realizing that he contained incredible strength and skill that could make them stronger and more successful. Repeating that he did not need the team, he expressed his decision very clearly, but they remained persistent and continued to not believe him, as if stubbornly hoping that he would change his mind. Increasingly aware of their helplessness, the partners began to admit their mistakes and beg for mercy, as if sincerely wanting the guy to forgive them and not harm them. At this time, the white-haired observer, surprised by what was happening, could not believe that a person with such incredible strength and skill was working in such an inconspicuous noodle bar. His eyes remained glued to this unexpected show, and he thought about the possible consequences. Realizing that this guy could be a valuable asset, the white-haired man asked his men to find a reliable person who could keep an eye on him and use his abilities in future matters. However, the white-haired man, making sure that his companions were on their knees, ordered them to stand up and obey his orders. He made it clear that as soon as the captain came to his senses, they could take a position and act in accordance with his decision. It seemed to him that it would not be difficult for him to deal with these three. Their strength and determination seemed to him insufficient to detain him. The girl, watching what was happening, thought that the guy was simply the embodiment of her dreams, because he was such a strong and courageous man that it attracted her attention and aroused admiration. Fascinated by the guy, the girl instantly knelt down and begged him for mercy, as if she couldn't wait to protect the one who had aroused her admiration. The guy covered his nose, perhaps because of some unpleasant smell, and asked the girl to shut up, expressing dissatisfaction with her behavior. The girl was persistent in her pleas and convictions, not intending to back down, and tried in every possible way to convince the guy that she could be useful to him, and that he would not regret taking her with him. Her voice sounded pleading and insistent. Jason eventually dropped his hands and asked the girl to be more reasonable and respectful, emphasizing that he wanted to hear her talk normally. The girl was amazed that Jason had moved away again and claimed that she was not a bad player and would like to be with him because she saw him as a good person. After the incident, the partners began to sneer and mock the girl, seeing her attempts to convince Jason as something comical and frivolous. The girl was confused and disappointed not understanding why she was worse than the other girl whom the captain loved. This caused her to feel indignant and doubt her worth. The partners, being in an aggressive mood, began to reproach the girl, saying that she was not worth even the finger of the girl the captain loved, as if trying to increase her feeling of inferiority. The girl asked them to repeat their words, as if she wanted to make sure that they said exactly what she thought and was ready to fight back. The partners were puzzled by the girl's behavior, and could not understand why she began to behave this way, they pointed out that the guy had left and no one would protect her anymore, which made her position vulnerable. After that blow, he felt his strength and resolve disappear as if by magic, and he realized that he was no longer able to resist Jason. With this understanding, she felt that power and the opportunity to regain her honor and self-respect suddenly appeared in her hands, and she prepared to use this moment to its fullest. His partner was completely unprepared for such an attack, and she took him with force like a storm, literally plunging him into helplessness and amazement. The girl was amazed at how the man found the inner determination and energy to not give up despite her powerful attack. She began to ask herself the question of what makes him so resilient and strong. The man also noticed that the girl turned out to be very unusual and not as helpless as he might have expected. Her determination and strength amazed him and he began to understand that she was not just like everyone else. Reflecting on the situation, the man began to think about the possibility of inviting a girl to his team. His brothers often complained that the team did not have enough female players, and he saw potential in her that could strengthen their roster. He also offered to find out more information about the guy who had previously scared them away with his power, in order to find his weak point 
and used this knowledge to his advantage, he understood that information was an important weapon. The girl was determined and waited for the moment when she would have the chance to fight Jason herself. Her burning desire for revenge would not leave her alone. The partners lying on the ground were clearly in shock and did not expect that the girl would defeat them so easily. Her strength and determination came as a surprise to them, and they found themselves completely helpless. The girl, after paying attention to him, tried to collect her thoughts before answering. She began to tell him what she heard and knew about the mysterious society of eight, mentioning the rumors and legends that were circulating about it. The girl, having made up her mind quickly and without hesitation, agreed to join the team of the man and the Society of Eight, seeing in this a chance for a new beginning and an opportunity to realize her goals. Indeed, if Jason knew that she was now in a large guild, he would see the difference between an ordinary person and a member of a powerful organization. This highlights how changes in life can lead to different opportunities and status. Given the girl's seniority, James asked her to call him simply by his first name, without using formalities or titles, this created an atmosphere of openness and respect between them. After a long conversation, the girl asked who the guy was who had caused such strong emotions in her. Bursting into tears, she began to explain that it was her former partner, named Jason, and that they had previously been on the same team. This clarified the situation and explained her complicated feelings for him. James began to show interest in Jason's possible weaknesses and considered how their team could use this information to avenge the girl. He saw this situation as a chance for revenge and justice. The girl revealed that Jason only had one weakness, a woman named Alice. This information could prove valuable to James and his team, and they began to develop a plan based on this knowledge. The guy, unaware of any intrigue, was simply walking around the evening city, relaxingly enjoying the atmosphere and not realizing that his life would soon change. The stranger followed the guy and reported by phone that Jason was heading towards the eastern square of the city. This information was important for the planned actions. In addition, the stranger was informed that the captain asked the interlocutor to take the girl down to satisfy their brothers. This was part of the scientist's plan to convince Jason. Jason, of course, realized that he was being followed, but it was not clear to him what exactly the guy needed from him, and how this related to his actions the situation became a mystery to him. The guy was informed that the girl had revealed Jason's main weakness to a woman named Alice. The captain wanted to use the information about Alice to try to fix Jason and keep him on the team, seeing this woman as the key to convincing him. The stranger continued to closely monitor the guy, maintaining contact and transmitting information about his movements and actions to the team. His gaze was persistent and attentive, indicating that he did not intend to give the stranger a chance to escape. Jason was ready to look into the situation and find out who was behind him. It became interesting to Jason who was so brave as to follow him and even try to interact with him face to face. This aroused his curiosity and growing attention. He couldn't remember if they had met before, but the stranger made him feel as if this meeting was something special. However, the stranger, like the wind, quietly slipped past the guy, without reacting to his presence, disappearing into the night leaving only a slight whiff of mystery in the air. Unrest began to build inside Jason, and finally he decisively used his double as his last resource. Raising his eyes to the sky, he called for his faithful companion, instantly transferring to him the task of solving the mystery that the stranger presented. The blow hit them with indescribable force, as if the force of nature itself took off in all its majesty and power, leaving destruction and adrenaline in their veins. Jason immediately began to insist that they be told who sent this guy to follow him. His voice sounded decisive and demanding. He was ready to reveal this secret. It is clear that the guy immediately began to dissuade him and claimed that he was just passing by, having nothing to do with this situation. His words sounded convincing, but Jason was persistent in his demand to find out the truth. Based on the earrings, Jason guessed that this guy belonged to the Clan of Eight. According to the events of his past life, the eight clan should not have appeared in front of him so early, which left him bewildered and anxious about what might happen ahead. He was determined to keep this secret and not reveal his true identity, hoping that there were ways to avoid possible consequences. The hope that he could hide his past life was important and motivating to him. The fallen eight clan soldiers were known for their cruelty, but apparently this simple dead man was not that dangerous, so continuing the interrogation seemed like a waste of time. 
The main character called the ruler and announced that he had a desire. He wanted the guy to explain for what purpose he was pursuing him and demanded clarity on this matter. It is clear that the guy immediately began to divulge information. He said that he was under the leadership of a general and added that they had one beautiful player on their team. This beauty told them all about one of the best players. Just like Jason, she shared information about his level of ability and what he is like in real life. But the captain planned to use Alice to blackmail Jason into becoming a dead clan warrior. His plans were cunning and dangerous, and he sought to manipulate events in his favor. In a past life, in the third year after the plague began, a man killed Alice's sister. This event brought drama and tragedy to their past relationship and became one of the key moments of their meeting in the new world. The main character secretly yearned to avenge his sister's death and was willing to risk his life to improve his abilities. He felt a burning desire for revenge and was willing to go to extreme measures to achieve his goal. What a pity that he ended up dying at the hands of a monster, first having to kill the man who killed Alice's sister before the Clan of Eight could find her. Fate led him to the sacrifice and carried him away from this world, leaving his goal unfulfilled. He ordered the Dark Emperor to get rid of the guy's body. Deciding that this ill-wisher no longer posed a threat, he ordered him to be removed to prevent future threats. He began to practice meditation and internal examination for the next few minutes. After the events of his past life and the meeting with the man from the Eight Clan, he needed a short respite and time to think. The guy turned to the bishop and asked a question about prayers. He wanted to know that if he wishes Kalamna to attack Alice, how long will it take for his wish to come true? The bishop replied that this required no more than 24 hours. He realized that he had to change his profession and strengthen his skills before he could confidently go about killing a man. Deciding that time was of the essence, he began to prepare for this grim goal. But first of all, they need to go to the second part of the passage of the secret world. This was the next stage of their journey, where new challenges and riddles awaited them. The secret world, the place where the League of Assassins operated, turned out to be surprisingly quiet and calm. A special atmosphere filled with secrets and hidden dangers reigned in this place, and they were ready for new challenges. He didn't even know what to expect, but he hoped that everything would go smoothly and without problems. He entered the unknown world of the Leagues of Assassins with the hope of success and readiness for any difficulties that might arise on his way. He felt how the portal surrounded him with magical energy, and a moment later he found himself in a new world. A special atmosphere reigned here, reminiscent of the Middle Ages with elements of fantasy. The main character was ready for new trials and adventures that awaited him in this mysterious and dangerous world of the League's killers. A man appeared in front of the main character who stated that he felt the power within him and asked if he was ready to follow high-level secrets. The main character was excited about the opportunity to uncover new secrets and gain access to knowledge that would help him become stronger. It is clear that the guy recognized a familiar face from the NPC world and this aroused his interest and questions about what awaits him next in this world. There were a lot of dangers on the snowy plains, hidden threats lurked through the snow-white expanses and the main character had to be on guard to avoid dangerous situations. The level of this secret world was indeed much higher than the level of the secret world of the second part of the dungeon. This world represented a new challenge, more difficult and dangerous, and the main character had to overcome great difficulties to get to his goal. As soon as the main character appeared in this world, an enemy immediately appeared in front of him. It was an unpredictable and dangerous moment, and he was ready for battle. Jason felt that something in this world caught his attention, and he was ready to explore and uncover the mysteries hidden in the distance. He knew that new mysteries and adventures awaited him, and he was determined to solve them. He had to fight a level 20 black snowman. This enemy was powerful and dangerous, and the battle promised to be difficult, but Jason was ready for the challenge and prepared for the fight. Jason could not understand how such a monster could end up in the second part of the dungeon and he doubted whether he had enough strength to fight it. The possibility of meeting such a monster was unexpected for him and caused him questions and anxiety. It is clear that the guy immediately called on the Dark Emperor to help him in this battle with the Black Snowman. The Dark Emperor was his faithful ally and came to the rescue at moments when it was absolutely necessary. The main character found the place where the snowman's sharp horn was located. This horn was a potential weakness of the monster 
and Jason decided to use it for his own purposes to defeat the Black Snowman. The enemy was furious and ready to destroy everything in his path. His aggression and power made him a dangerous opponent, and Jason had to show outstanding skills to survive this fight. The Dark Emperor was easily able to knock the Black Snowman onto his back. His powerful abilities and strength were impressive, and he became a reliable support for Jason in this fight. They found what they needed, namely the Horn of a Snowman. This artifact could have special value and be used in the future in their adventures. With this loot they continued their journey in this secret world. With growing excitement, he concentrated on this dangerous task, removing the horn from his opponent's head with a care that bordered on art. As soon as the guy finished removing the horn, the next opponents were already in front of him. The situation turned out to be much more tense and unexpected than he expected. And then the Dark Emperor entered the scene, joining the guy, both of them sharing a feeling of bewilderment at the unexpected appearance of new enemies. The main character asked whether the double was ready for a battle on which much in their lives depended. However, the new opponents turned out to be quite slow, which gave the Dark Knight and the guy confidence that their joint efforts would be decisive in victory. A short time after the start of the fight, the Dark Knight and the guy met the next enemy, and even then learned that the snowmen were bringing them new lessons in this fight. Indeed, they fought shoulder to shoulder, seamlessly coordinating their movements and combining their efforts in this mortal combat. The Dark Knight raised his sword towards his enemy, charging forward with fury and grace, his movements precise and efficient, like that of a seasoned warrior who had emerged victorious from battles many times before. And at this time, Jason did not stand aside, he also uncompromisingly fought with the other opponents, sparing no effort to support the Dark Knight. Cohesion and mutual understanding between them bore fruit in this fierce battle. Even the monster himself was amazed at how easily and skillfully Jason dealt with him in battle. With willpower and dexterity, he turned out to be a more than worthy opponent, who opposed the monster with amazing ease. The main character, feeling the need for additional support, turned to the Dark Emperor with a request for help. A clear plan was firmly established in his mind, defining the sequence of actions necessary to defeat everyone who crossed his path. With every step, Jason moved closer to the monsters, feeling the tension in the air, but at the same time filled with determination and confidence in his plan. With incredible ease and literally in the blink of an eye, he cut his opponent in half, but for this merciless action he received the following lesson from the snowman, who was ready to punish him for such cruelty. Jason, using some indescribable method, stunned the monsters, depriving them of the ability to actively resist, thus gaining an advantage in the battle, which gave him the opportunity to move forward in his mission. He then turned to the Dark Emperor with a request to finish off the monsters while they were unconscious, in order to protect himself from a possible threat in the future. The Dark Emperor agreed and began to destroy the monsters as soon as possible in order to forever eliminate their participation in the battle and ensure the safety of the main character and his allies. The double wasted no time and without further ado cut off the monsters' heads, destroying them as a threat once and for all. The partner was so confident in his intentions and actions that his confidence was contagious to the entire group. His leadership and determination created an atmosphere of trust and growing hope, despite the difficulties and dangers that lay ahead. Using all his power and experience, he crushed opponents in every possible way to ensure the safety of the group and the achievement of their goals. This battle will also go down in history as one of the most significant for both of them, becoming a symbol of their friendship and joint exploits. They had already collected over 30 snowman antlers, a testament to the many battles they had fought and their determination to continue fighting no matter the challenge. Despite the strangeness and tenacity of the snowmen, they did not lose their determination and continued to fight them. The battle with these mysterious opponents seemed endless. The Penguin King was amazed at how these people dared to come to his kingdom. In his intention to teach them the way to kill, he was ready to go to extremes and demonstrate this with their living example. 